What's up, everybody? This is Phil Rogacki. And I'm Jared Abergina. You're listening to Two Tree Guys Podcast. What's up, everybody? Phil Rogacki here with Two Tree Guys, uh, sitting here with my uh, co-host, Jared Abergina. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, uh, we have another. We bring you another uh, episode in our series, Gear Talk, here, and we got a, a guest in our studio from Edelrid, uh, Josiah Georgeson. Is that how you say it right? Yeah. Georgeson. All right. Yep, wow. Nailed it. Uh, work Safety Territory Manager for Edelrid, uh, and we're going to go over a few different products today. But before we get into that, uh, guys, I say it every single week. Uh, you know the fee. Pay the fee. If you got something out of it, you liked it, please share this. Um, put it on your Instagram, social media, whatever you got to do. I don't care if you make a cassette tape and mail it to somebody. Please share this to somebody out there uh, that's going to get something out of this. So um, we're going to jump right into the gear talk. I'm going to pass it right over to you, Josiah, and go for it, my friend. Let's let's start discussing some of this. Well, shoot. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on, guys. Uh it's yeah, a pleasure definitely. to be here. You guys do some fantastic work, and so I feel like it's quite the privilege to participate <laughs> a little bit with y'all. Yeah, yeah you, you guys, you guys were shooting film all day today, and that's going to be coming out, you know, soon on your channel, right? Yeah. So keep an eye out for that. We'll uh, make sure everyone's tagged in here, but we've got some some rare footage of Jared uh, on video, <laughs> uh, laying down some gold nuggets too. So oh, good, um, good, good. What where, where do they got to go find that at when it comes out? Strider Trees. Uh, stridertrees.com I guess Strider, that will be the my website there'll be links to the YouTube you can link to my YouTube through Instagram or whatever but it's it's the channel Strider Trees okay awesome. cool Cool. And uh, we'll get links to you guys too. We'll put it on your. Maybe I'll make a playlist and just link the two, and so That'd we can cool. get them get them together. Yeah. We get a compilation. Yeah, get a get a academy playlist going on. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <sighs> yeah, so we got a couple of uh, sweet little pits of gear here. One of them is a uh, is a new one, and it's not out yet. So it it isn't. It isn't. It's a. Uh, we've got the manufacturing done. Production is happening. This is a production model. It's uh. It's just a matter of getting the getting it here from wherever it's being built. But uh, so Adel those of you who don't know, Adelrid's a German company, and exactly as you imagine, German everything. It that's what it is like. <laughs> it's it's the BMW. It's like hey, we just kind of thought about everything and then over engineered it a little bit. <laughs> and uh, as long as you use it right, it's beautiful. <laughs> how how yeah. long how long has this been in kind of R and D and stuff? Years. Um, years. Yeah, probably it's at least three years. Are you even? able to be talking about that it's coming out yeah yep yeah yeah okay. so the yeah. first shipment we're expecting the first shipment to land like early spring okay. end awesome. of february march yeah yeah and we'll have a couple hundred most of those will probably end up being samples going out to the dealerships because Adelaide doesn't sell direct to consumer yeah. but they will be available pretty much anywhere you can get tree gear gotcha. and uh, the I'm, rope axis guys in particular i'm so. excited about this i mean this is kind of uh stem from you know from from my, from my past uh working with the rig Something very similar, just just a major upgrade, and I think that's uh, pretty darn cool. I'm excited to play, and I, I got to play around with it today, and I was I was impressed. Yeah, <clears throat> I was impressed. Yeah, the rig really did good things. Like when it came out, it, it was especially safe. It was really consistent. Uh, the fact that you could lock it off just by positioning the handle was was really slick. And then there've been a number of devices that have come out that are similar in function. Kind of the primary mechanism being this camming you know action right so mm -hmm. the rope feeds through here when you weight it the weighting of the rope activates this cam pinches it over here bunch of friction that gets engaged the whole way around the cam as soon as you weight it so they they close off really solidly like when you're sitting in it you don't feel like it's going to slip through you don't feel like you need to put a backup knot like it is just so solid um, and this one because it's rope access but also because Adelrid comes from rock climbing it's good from 8.9 millimeter all the way up to 11.8. Oh, wow. So it's got a huge range. It's a big range. Yeah. yeah, right, right. And you can, you know, for a real beginner rock climber, it would be much safer than than any other device because it just is so reliable with the camming. You know, unlike the Greek gear, which is kind of designed to be more fluid, Right. this one is not, but it makes it safe. Yeah. So would this be rated for, you know, rescue as well, double load? Yes, yeah. So the you have to... Similar to the rig or the ID, if you're going to rescue, it's good for up to 200 kilos, okay. but you're supposed to put a second carabiner in. So it gives you just another little bend in your rope, yeah. gives you a little bit more control. 
Gotcha. But gotcha. it is rated to do that. Well, that's a major benefit compared to the Petzl uh, rig in the ID where you're combined in, into one unit. Yeah, definitely. And the other kind of slick thing that this does that that is, is an advantage here, with the rig or the ID, when you activate the handle, if you pull it past it, you got to swivel it all the way around. And it really only functions in kind of one orientation. It's got to be facing the same way most all the time. This one, it actually, it really doesn't matter which way. As you were kind of experiencing when it's on the swivel, some people will want to spin it around towards them and they'll activate it this way. And some people will activate it with their other hand and they'll hold it over. And it's mm -hmm. actually been, it's in the product manual that you can use this one-handed if you practice. And it's Fantastic. kind of a, you know, expert's device, but they've just decided that, no, it's it's valid. It's safe to do that. Yeah. You know what I really like about this, and it's, it's really hard to tell you guys just by seeing it right here, you know, until you see this thing on the rope it doesn't give it justice. So what he was saying is, you know, being able to use that lever in both directions for descent is, um, is huge. I mean, that's yeah, never been seen. Very, um, ambidextrous. Yeah. yeah like you're going to figure out a comfortable way to use it just by playing with it pretty quick. So what about the locking mechanism to close the gate? How does that? Yeah. So similar to the ID and then there's another, um, uh, a CT makes one, uh, the D4, I think, yep, um, yep. that's got this anti-panic feature. So if you actually, if you over pull it and you freak out and because as we figured out actually most people clench when they're panicking, it will pull past the release mechanism and then lock again in place facing down. So that again, keeps it out of the way, makes it so that well, let's just say it got caught, the rope flicked it up and now a branch caught it and it flicked it all the way over again. Now it's going to hold it out of the way. So it's going to release that. So mm -hmm. it would be all but impossible to, to accidentally jam it in such a way that it just keeps going right. because it, it, everything about the design is, is tilted towards keeping that from happening. Yep. Now the one slick advantage here too, is in this configuration in particular, this is actually how, when I've used it, this is how I prefer to run it. Um, I, I will wait the the running end. I'll hold it down. I'll flip it into the panic mode. And now I'll put my hand over the rope coming out over the nose here and add a little bit of friction to my fingers and then just move that with the heel of my hand. And I've got a lot of control. So you don't actually have to reset it. You don't have to stand mm -hmm. up. You don't have to spin the handle around. It'll just start releasing as soon as you're ready for it. And yeah. As soon as you do stand up, it snaps back and you're you're good to go again. I think one of the biggest features that I seen when you were out there that got me after the fact I was using that you're like, well, if you just push that little uh, cam right there, you can feed you can feed it back in. And I was like, oh gosh, that's that's awesome. Right. So the first time I've used this, I did the same thing. I was like trying to hold this in just the right and then pull slack through to for to make a redirect, and it was annoying. I was like, what the heck? And then one of the engineers told me, yeah, it's got this little cam spot for your thumb that you just hold that down and the cam stays open you pull slack out it's super easy genius yeah so it's genius. very very simple compact like there's no way to catch stuff uh the the other kind of neat little feature here is it's got this two-stage lock so that's what i was actually referring to yeah with the the plate there yeah so you I don't know if you guys can see or where the cameras are there's too many of them they can but, see from oh from here yeah yeah, so we've got this little red indicator that says, ah, you're not closed all the way, right? And it's actually got on this side too. So no matter which way it's oriented, you can see the little warning, hey, it's not it's not locked. But it actually still um, keeps it from opening up. Uh, it'll go this way, but it won't go it won't go farther that direction. And the reason we have that is actually because of a another feature which is related. This carabiner gap here is really big, so you can put a a carabiner all the way around so it's not going to get caught on the gate or not likely to mm -hmm. but um, you can still open this with the carabiner in place so again you don't have to take it off your harness you don't have to disconnect it you're not at risk of dropping mm -hmm. but what we found is that when you if you close this while it's under load so if i'm holding this down and then you close this slide what can happen is that slide can contact the carabiner and be prevented from closing mm -hmm. and so that's when i happens it, it happens and i notice it but the few times that that i've done that it's like oh it's red no shut it you right know. now the reason we accept that weird interaction with the carabiner is because once it's closed the carabiner actually keeps it from being able to open so right. now under weight now it won't open because the carabiner is exactly. actually holding it so yeah it was like there it, it's a little bit two sides of that thing but it gives you some peace of mind when you're actually using it like you just can't come open under load so that's kind of slick. It's not very heavy. This is a little bit lighter than ID. Um, 
And like the, the, like I said, the rope range is wider by a small margin, but yeah. that matters because basically all the ropes we use are 11 to 11, seven, 12, you know, and I've actually run it on 12 mil mm -hmm. and it works fine. What's the slip factor on that? Do you know how, how many, like as far as the sit back? Uh, I know or, how many cans until, and cause obviously, right. You now you rate this thing for X amount of pounds. It's going to slip before failure. So it, is there a slip factor? I think. I forget how many cans the rig was. I just, you know, yeah, most yeah. people don't. Right, right. It's you know. designed to slip under a certain load. Yeah. It's a little bit of a safety feature to do that. I'm not sure what that is okay. offhand. Yeah. yeah. That'd be a good thing to know. Uh, my experience and what I was told by the engineers is that it changes a little bit depending on the rope you use. Oh, yeah. So they realized you could actually run it on a smaller rope, but it starts to fail the static test because of the way it pinches here. So it, it doesn't slip on the smaller loads because it bites so hard. But on the bigger ones, theoretically, you would get a slip somewhere, mm -hmm. uh, but not under a, any normal load. Yeah. Of course, again, you want it to a little bit, but I should figure out what that number is. That would be a good one yeah. to know. No, I like it. I think it's um, – I'm excited to to see this come out. I mean, I think with the SRS devices we have out there, it kind of ran away from this a little bit. Um, but for, I say, smaller trees, rescue, um, working on a spar, um, that's one thing that I've always loved about the rig is working on a spar. Right. You know, it gets you so close. So close. So yep. compact. And then, you know, the easy access to rescue as well. You know, most, um, you know, firefighters or, you know, anybody entry level can figure out how to grab a lev lever and pull it right. on it. You know? And they're going to be familiar already somewhat with the ergonomics. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not, it's not so foreign. There are a few really time, time tested devices that sort of fit in there. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like a lot of those, like the D4, it's got stainless on all of the wear points. So okay. it's going to hold up. I mean, part of the sustainability goals of Edelrid is build stuff that can last as best as we can. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. and, and that's part of the f design philosophy that goes into this. So where did the name come from? They've got a thing about power like electric power related things we've got the mega oh, i thought i mean like power like they are germans man they no, do want to right. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's the name what's the name of this again this one's uh, called the megawatt but uh, then we got the fall arrestor which is the fuse and our like our special uh device that they use for mountain mountaineering is the jewel and the giga yeah. jewel and so <laughs> they just jewel, huh? they just got a, a theme there with the electronics yeah, uh, yeah. stick yep. with what works right gotcha so what when is this product coming out it, it's Technically out. We're just waiting for stock. Uh, it should be in stock March to May, depending on we're get, we've got two shipments. We got one yeah. that we're hoping to get by air as soon as we can, and then the main one will come by sea, you know, summertime before summer. Awesome. Now, what about any of the maintenance or any how to how to inspect that before you climb on it? Yep. So this, um, I, like many of the hardware devices we have to inspect it every day before use. It's just mm -hmm. part of part of your routine. Obviously, you function check it. You put it on. You pull on it. You load it. You see, is it slipping? Is it not? Um, also, you're going to check. There's a handful of little screws inside here. Most of those screws aren't critical. They hold on the little plastic plates, but you want to make sure those are there, particularly this one on the inside. If it's loose, you might end up causing wear on your rope that you don't anticipate. Um, you're going to be moving it around, opening it up, looking at as best you can at anywhere there could be cracks. You know, I would be looking around here. You're going to check the function of this, make sure it's actually springing back. You're going to mm -hmm. load it, push it all the way through to the panic mode, make sure again that it holds you and it's not pulling back. Um, but they're designed, I mean, the lifespan on these things is it's basically as long as it's functioning and as yeah. long as it doesn't have any obvious wear, it should be good to go. Yeah. So, so what's your favorite rope that you, I mean, diameter, I mean, you don't have to say the exact rope, but like maybe more so what's your favorite diameter running that? Um, smaller, the better I've found actually. Okay. Yeah. So in terms of just how it feels to use, I, I was running actually a, a rock climbing rope in it just playing with it. We've got a interstatic pro tech version that's really dynamic and mm -hmm. it's a little bit smaller and stretchy and it butter. It's just butter through that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Sm softer, smaller ones. I like the woodpecker of all of our, um, of all of our industrial robes, definitely the best. We are running it there in, um, not poison ivy calamine, which mm -hmm. is like a Yale blue moon variant, yeah. I think. And that was smooth. That was right. one of the better ropes I've played with it. 
Yeah, which is surprising because, you know, coming from, I always have to compare it to the rig because they're very similar, but you you start putting those diameter ropes in there, you know, closer to, say, a poison ivy or whatnot, and they just don't, they don't, it's not as smooth. Poison it's, ivy it's is 11.7, yep. and I think the rig's only, like, maxed out at 11.5. Yeah. So it, it, you know, technically, whatever, it's just not supposed to deal with the bigger ones. Yeah. But then again, I've never used the rescue one. Have you used the rescue ID? Uh, no. Okay, so that one's supposed to do up to 13-something. Yeah, but it's just too big. It is. It's huge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, and this this will be smaller. It'll be smaller. It'll also be yeah. a little bit cheaper, a little less expensive. Um, yeah, we're real well, happy what, with what it. What is the cost of that? Uh, I'll see when it arrives, but it's supposed to be right around 220 Gotcha. Yep, which nice. is totally reasonable for cool. on, on the market. Yeah. Anything else on the product? Uh, a little RFID tag that's worth noting. So we're working on we're we're kind of developing some software still, but a lot of our uh, work safety products have an integrated RFID tag, and the idea is uh, work safety inspections are a hassle, and it's really it's really handy to uh, to be oh, able to nice, just scan smart. your whole like inventory and be able to okay That's here's smart. the talk talk a little bit about that a little more yeah so i mean we have requirements for inspections both the daily inspection the what biannual inspection for yeah. certain pieces and y- ideally you need to have documentation you keep track of that and it's a huge hassle if you've got a whole bunch of gear also if things get lent out if someone takes it you can have systems that'll let people check it out, you know, who it's with, what crew it's on or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, if there's an accident associated with a particular one, it doesn't get mixed up before it gets sent back to the factory, whatever. So the idea is to integrate that with the hardware and then use our app. And now all of a sudden everything's just in a system and it's going to be faster. And who, who else does that right now? So I don't know anyone else doing that with their, like not yeah. in, with the hardware embedded. I know Petzl's got like a QR code thing, then they've got an app that is similar. That's but cool. Too. This will be much easier. Yeah, right. That is cool. Yeah, so that's that's going to be exciting. Also, you know, you you when you buy these things, you can register the information of that device. Like, okay, how old is it? When was it purchased? All those goodies. Our uh, Tree Rex saddle has that too. Mm-hmm. It's got the little spot, and so we're unfortunately our the software is not really. I don't know if it's not reliable yet or just not available yet. It's still kind of in development. So the hardware side is slower. We wanted to get that and start releasing it because the actual hardware is not not that complicated. It's pretty common and pretty available. Mm-hmm. But they're they're still dialing in the app. They're still dialing in you know that other side of it. But that'll be a big part of it going going forward. And the RFID tag. So the advantage of that over some of the other styles. There's also um, what is it near field NFC, which is kind of like what your phone uses for uh, payment stuff. Yeah, the NFC is similar. It's super cheap, and like everyone's phone uses it. There's an app called Scannable, and the, they give these little devices you can put them on anything. Sweet product, really cool. It's gonna be great for like individual people like me who only have a handful of things that they want to keep track of. But the problem is, you gotta be right on top of it. Whereas mm. the RFID, you can kind of wave your wand past a line of inventory. And and all you know, all the products shows up all the product data. You've got more distance, a little more flexibility that way. So mm. the adventure parks, for example, they love it. Mm-hmm. They got RFID tags and all their full body harnesses. Yeah, things like that. That's where we really you know we know it's gonna it's gonna have its place. That's cool. That's really cool. You know, just to, I mean, it's it's being used out there, but to see it used like that, and uh, you, you're gonna see a lot more adapters. Yep. Well, and it's going to start becoming a, a requirement. I know yeah. they're already working on something like that for the tree climbing competitions, like in a system to help speed inspections along. It's like, okay, let's see your let's see your documentation on when this was bought, and then gotcha. Yeah, and so it's it's going to become much more prevalent, but it's got to start on the cutting edge first. And if there's anything Adelred does well, it's they try to be cutting edge. I see yeah. that. I see yeah. that. And these guys have been they've been in the works for a long time. Cool. Awesome. Any last comments? No, good stuff, man. I'm I'm excited for that. I'm I like to see uh, how the industry takes it, and hopefully make a comeback for you know that style of climbing. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, mean, even if not the trees, the windmill guys will love it. The wash window washers, like that's where it's going to really shine. That yeah. the, you know, those are the guys who use these types of devices all day, every day, and we've been giving them out and getting great feedback. So I'm really excited about it. Yeah, I think it's a good one. I think for people coming in and go, well, how would I apply that? When would I use it? Why does that make sense? 
I would say if you're, you know, the climber, you know, a lot of pitch, um, where, you know, your, your ascent method is maybe a rope wrench and you're just tired of changing out hitch cords all the time, you can still use that to get up the tree. But if you're mainly stripping up, blocking, dropping a top, coming down, dropping a stick, really good device. I mean, this thing's going to take over you buying hitches for the entire year. Um, your work position is going to be great, you know. It, yep. might, it might be the new device for it, you know. I'm going to use it for crane operations for sure. You know, when you get stuck at the top of the crane, just use it to lay down, take it right, take the rope right out of it, yank the rope out of the crane. Like it's just going to make that so efficient. As it, nice. And it'll be nicer than the akimbo in some ways because, it, like you said, it'll tolerate some of that pitchier material better. Yeah. So that's exciting. Cool. There you guys have it. The Megawatt. The, the megawatt. megawatt. The Megawatt. The Megawatt. Coming to a store near you. Megawatt. Uh, no, thanks for uh, sharing that. Uh, I know you got some other products we're going to get into here in a little bit. Uh, but there you guys have it, guys. There's Gear Talk. Uh, you just heard uh, about it from Josiah. Megawatt by Etta Rid. Uh, go check it out. Go buy it. Go use it. Uh, send us, DM us uh, some comments and uh, what you think of it. So uh, remember the fee. Uh, share it. Uh, we appreciate you guys and, uh, we'll talk to you soon. See ya. Bye.